Hello, welcome to American Literature 1915 to the Present. I'm Dennis Jers. I've been teaching at Seton Hill since about 2003, and I teach courses in literature and writing and journalism and new media. And uh, I really love teaching any literature class because I get to revisit works that I've loved since I was a student. I also like to teach works that I've never taught before, and there are a few on this list um, for our syllabus. Each time that I read a familiar work, I see something new. And each time that I read a new work, I see something familiar. And um, the brilliant writers can do new things with established conventions, uh, or they can break from those conventions in surprising and effective ways. And those are the kinds of things that I hope we'll be able to talk about over the course of this semester. Uh, Canvas will be the command center for this course. We will be using some other tools. Uh, I'll be having you guys make some podcasts so you'll be able to listen to each other's voices instead of just listen to me all the time. And uh, upcoming assignments will walk you through uh, the tools that I'll have you use. You'll always have a chance to practice a tool, uh, uh, an audio uh, tool or other media tool if you, sh you should choose to use one. You'll always have a chance to practice before we do any serious work with that tool. Now, first of all, I'd like to call your attention to the calendar in Canvas. Uh, it lays out all the work that I ask you to do. So for this first day, I've numbered items one through six. That gets a little tedious as I shift things around. So um, uh, for the other days, the items aren't numbered. Here, for instance, this uh, assignment is due at 10 in the morning. This one says 10.01. This one says 10.02. This doesn't mean that I expect these assignments to take exactly one minute each. Uh, uh, they're all pretty much due at 10 o'clock. I'm just uh, adjusting the time so that they will appear uh, on your calendar in the order that I would like for you to do them. Most due dates are 10 in the morning, but for this first day, these assignments are just due uh, by the end of the day on the 13th. There are a few assignments due at 10 in the morning, a few more due 5 in the afternoon. This one is due at the end of the day. And that's simply to um, give you a little bit more time to stretch things out, um, get, the work, get the work done. This is, again, assignment is due. Uh, uh, as long as you get that on Friday, we're in good shape. But, uh, uh, you know, if this deadline, if that time is not convenient for you, well, then, you know, do it early. Um, uh, you do not have to be sitting down in front of your computer at any particular time. Watching and responding to this video lecture is the first assignment on your schedule. And then, you know, you could just go down the list and just keep doing it in that order. Um, I would like to call your attention also to this. Um, uh, this is a discussion about the nature of an online learning class. And also, I want to call your attention to this syllabus quiz. Uh, for, in this video lecture, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over course policies. Uh, but this syllabus quiz is an open notes uh, quiz that just asks you to demonstrate that you can find important details uh, from the syllabus, which is a very important part of any class, particularly an online class where um, there won't be a situation where um, uh, I'll be walking through the room and you can just ask me questions. You'll you'll have to take a, make a special effort to ask me questions by email. Um, uh, uh, but all the information that you need, the basics, are there in the syllabus. All these activities are actually pretty brief. They're the kinds of things that I would do in person on the first day of classes uh, just to uh, uh, um, orient you to uh, the tone and sort of the rhythms of the class. So these, these assignments won't take up a whole lot of time. Uh, if you'd like to work ahead, um, reading The Great Gatsby is something that you can start on. Uh, you'll have the weekend to finish it. And... Um, um, as you can see, there are uh, plenty of assignments uh, sprinkled through this calendar. We have to cover 15 works, 15 weeks worth of material in you know about five weeks, taking a, a week off for Christmas. Um, uh, that's about 20 working days to cover 15 weeks worth of material. So if you think about it, then each day on our calendar we have to cover. Um, uh, you know, if this were a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, well, then on Wednesday, we'd cover the Monday, Wednesday work, and then Thursday, we'll cover the Friday and next Monday, and this Friday, we'll cover the Wednesday and Friday of the, of the second week. So we're covering, you know, two weeks in three days, and that's, um, uh, that's a pretty hectic pace. 
but um, if you uh, recall that in a regular in-person class, you'll have about uh, two and a half hours sitting in the classroom each week. And then, you know, the formula. You really should work um, a minimum of about two hours outside of class for every hour in class. So you do the math here, and, um, well, I'll just tell you, uh, during the three or four weeks of J-term, I treat it as my full-time job. I mean, I have other things that I will try to be doing over the holiday, and I hope you will too. But um, this is not something that I do in my spare time. Uh, I am uh, taking this um, um, uh, teaching activity quite seriously, seriously, and I hope you will take the learning activity equally as seriously. My assumptions are your high school English teacher uh, prepped you to do such things as analyze the plot, analyze a character, discuss the settings, discuss a theme. Uh, what I'm asking you to do in this class at the college level builds upon the uh, plot summary and character analysis and uh, being able to respond to the author's biography or giving your own emotional responses to a work. Those are all important ways to enter into a text. But um, I'm assuming that you already know how to do all those things because you can't graduate from high school unless you can pass high school English. Um, the next video lecture, this one, Literary Close Reading, uh, introduces you to uh, the college-level responses to a literary work that I'm asking you to do in this class. If you've already taken a college literature class, literature class before, then this will be a familiar review to you. If you have not taken a literature class at the college level, well then, that's what the, these trees assignments are, this literary close reading assignment is. Um, they're designed to uh, get you up to speed so you'll know what I'm looking for and how what I look for differs from what your high school teachers might have rewarded you for doing. Um, on Canvas, uh, let's go to Canvas. You can see there are different ways to look at the assignments. Here's a module view. Um, here's an assignments view. Um, uh, probably the, the most efficient way is just looking here at the home, jump to today. You'll see what assignments are coming up. Uh, the calendar view is also uh, a useful thing. I already showed that to you. So, oh, here, tell you what, let me publish this so that, there we go. All right, so now, uh, officially, this course is published. Okay, so there we go. So, um, at the end of a course, when I ask my students uh, what advice that they would give to students who are just starting out, many of them say things like, uh, make sure that you do all the Canvas assignments uh, even if they feel like busy work, uh, they're, they're designed to help you, you know, do your best work on all the little assignments and they'll add up um, uh, so that incrementally you'll be brought from not knowing what Jurz expects to knowing very clearly what he expects of you. And the Canvas assignments are designed to do that. So many of my students just say, trust uh, the method and do the Canvas assignments and um, uh, the more uh, daunting assignments at the end of the semester, such as a research term paper, won't seem as um, uh, uh, as as daunting a task uh, if you've um, prepped by following through the sequence of assignments uh, presented by Canvas. So, uh, many of these assignments are asking you to respond to the literary work and as I mentioned, these activities on trees and a few others are designed to uh, help you understand what I'm looking for when I ask you to, res to respond to a literary work. Uh, yes, the plot is important, but if what I wanted was a plot summary, I would just look it up on Schmoop. Um, I'm asking you to demonstrate that you can use evidence from the literary works, that means the actual words that the author wrote, in order to defend a statement that you are making about the literary work. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, other Canvas activities will go into that in more detail. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about right now, uh, just trust the sequence. Uh, I go into that in more detail, and there's plenty of opportunity for feedback on that issue coming up. Uh, when I teach a literature class uh, online, I depend 
heavily on discussion. And uh, the um, uh, a quarter of this class is uh, your responses to informal discussions. Another quarter that I call the synthesis, 25%, is more thoughtful responses, usually to prompts, um, that ask you to put some more thought into your reactions. Another quarter of the assignment are exercises. Uh, the first exercise is due on Friday. These are uh, designed to help you uh, master the skills you'll need in order to write your research term paper at the end of the semester. So every one of these exercises uh, contributes in an important and meaningful way. And the last quarter of the assignments uh, of, on the syllabus is the research term paper. So uh, overall, I'm asking you to demonstrate a willingness to keep up with the course readings, uh, to contribute substantially to online discussions, to engage independently with each other. Um, I, do, I do not promise to read and comment on every post that you make in um, a forum. Uh, I will scan your work, I will jump in occasionally, but um, uh, I'm not going to jump in and correct you every time you spell a character's name wrong or make um, a mistake. Um, I'm hoping that your peers will catch some of those things, and perhaps you won't, and, and that's all right. Uh, uh, discussions are places where you're supposed to be a little bit risky, and uh, making a mistake uh, there is forgivable. Uh, but for a synthesis or an exercise or the term paper, that's where getting a character's name wrong or something like that is more important. And, and it'll be pretty clear when, um, uh, when I'm asking you simply to respond your first time through a text and when I'm asking you to have a more deliberate reaction that uh, I'm going to uh, evaluate at a, uh, at a higher level. Okay, so as I record this video, uh, all the major assignments uh, are listed. Um, uh, I fleshed out uh, the next weeks through December. Uh, we jump ahead to January. And, <coughs> and uh, I just have a notice. January is schedule is still in progress. I may be shifting some things around, filling in a few gaps. But... Uh, what you should also know is this is the last official day of classes. Uh, I'm allowing you to revise your final term paper draft up until uh, Monday the 22nd. So that gives you a little bit of extra time to make some major changes. So as long as your uh, paper is in and you've done all this work, the last assignment for the class uh, is your term paper revision, and that's due on Monday. So um, just letting you know that will um, ease the pressure, this chaotic pressure, because the, the regular J term starts right here. So, um, let's see. Uh, that's about it. Um, over the next few days, you might see me tweaking the assignments in January, but in general, I think uh, we're ready to go. Um, uh, I look forward to getting to know you virtually, at least, over the course of the term. Uh, happy reading, and I look forward to assessing your work and engaging with your thoughts about American literature from 1915 to the present.